Happy New Year, and welcome to the January 2023 Economic and Market Update presented by Commonwealth Financial Network. My name is Brad McMillan, and I'm Commonwealth's Chief Investment Officer. Although the fourth quarter as a whole was strong, December took back a good chunk of those gains to close out a truly terrible year for markets. The U.S. indices showed single-digit declines for December, capping off drops for the year of about 7% for the Dow, over 18% for the S&P, and a brutal 32% for the Nasdaq. International markets were also down at about 15% for developed markets and almost 20% for emerging markets. And even bond markets were down by more than 10%. There really was nowhere to hide last year. And what drove the widespread declines was the rise of inflation and the consequent substantial increase in rates engineered by the Federal Reserve. With inflation at 40-year highs and with the Fed raising rates at the fastest pace ever, the benchmark yield on the 10-year U.S. Treasury note more than doubled, from about 1.6 to over 3.8 percent at year end. Higher rates typically mean lower bond and stock prices, and that's just what we saw. But despite the substantial market declines, the economy continued to chug along. Job growth remained at strong levels for most of the year, and even with the decline at year-end was still healthy. Similarly, while growth slowed during the year, consumer spending and business investment rose. While the markets were down, the fundamentals of the economy were in much better shape. And it's those fundamentals that will define what we see in 2023. As we start the year, inflation looks to have peaked while interest rates are stabilizing. That should help support markets this year, and if the economy continues to do well, that could even drive them higher. This year is likely to be better than last, and maybe by quite a bit. That said, though, there are also risks in play as we start the new year. Here in the U.S., politics are a major concern, with a divided Congress at the head of the list. Internationally, the Chinese COVID outbreak is combining with the ongoing Ukraine war to keep commodity markets on edge. And of course, there are also the risks we don't even see yet. We're certainly not done with turbulence. But despite those risks, signs are that the systemic factors that hit markets hardest last year may be priced into the market already, even as the fundamentals of job growth, of spending, and of corporate earnings continue to beat expectations. When the fundamentals are sound and the macro environment is stable, the downside risks tend to be contained. And that's where we are right now. And that's really the bottom line. The downside risks are real, but we're increasingly moving past many of them into more positive territory. Market turbulence is normal, but as investors, we need to keep looking at our long-term goals and not the short-term gyrations. And the coming year, despite the real concerns, does look positive. That's it for this update. Thanks for watching. Join me in February for the next one, but until then, be sure to check my blog, The Independent Market Observer, for more timely comments. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay healthy, and have a terrific new year. We are getting through this together.